Moderna showing a 94.5% efficacy rate. Pfizer now says its vaccine is 95% effective. The next monumental challenge, delivery. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 good things that actually happened in 2020. I think it's here to stay for the convenience and the value it adds, and I think it's going to be here long after coronavirus. This marks a huge step in the medical field toward finding a cure for the virus, one that had sparked a global health crisis predating the 1980s. The water in its many canals, usually dull and murky as a result of the many boats, is suddenly clear. For this list, we're looking at the best and most impactful good news and trends from 2020. We're not saying it all outweighed the bad. We're just reminding ourselves that some good actually happened in this year as well. What's your favorite feel-good story of 2020? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Increasing the power of good news. 2020 sucked, and March 2020 really sucked. A pandemic was officially declared by the WHO, and the world went into lockdown, a scary and confusing event in modern history. On a personal note, this week actually brought a whole lot of good news because it marked 15 years since this haircut was born. We desperately needed some good news, and John Krasinski was there to answer. On March 29th, not long after the global lockdowns began, Krasinski aired the first episode of Some Good News. Produced by Krasinski and run out of his home, the series saw the host relaying happy and uplifting stories to his scared and concerned audience. Just to see your face is so great. Major guest appearances from the likes of Steve Carell, Brad Pitt and the Hamilton cast also helped. In eight weeks, the series accumulated over 70 million views. My name is Alexander Hamilton And there's a million things I haven't done just you wait, just you wait. Number 9. Signs of life and water on other planets. Life on Earth is certainly struggling, but the prospect of life existing elsewhere is looking up. Humanity has long questioned the existence of extraterrestrial life, and 2020 made some progress in answering the age-old question. In September 2020, scientists discovered that the clouds of Venus contained phosphine, a toxic compound made by microbes. Here is what phosphine looks like. This is a computer-generated image. Usually on Earth, this gas is associated, as we've just been hearing, with microbes living in oxygen-poor environments like swamps or in the guts of animals like penguins. However, this discovery was met with much debate. Not a single process we looked at could produce phosphine in, in high enough quantities to explain our team's findings of phosphine in the Venus atmosphere. That same month, researchers discovered three bodies of salt water underneath the ice of Mars, all of which were centered around the major one found back in 2018. Today we're going to announce that under certain circumstances, liquid water has been found on Mars. According to one of the paper's co-authors, quote, it's a complex system. It's estimated that the main lake is almost 20 miles across and that the entire lake system is spread over roughly 46,000 miles. Where you find water that obviously gets people excited about looking for the potential for hosting life. Number eight, surprise albums. We know this is small time compared to the calamities that have faced us in 2020, but we're taking solace where we can. Such a this was the year of the surprise album, probably as a means for artists to give some happiness to their beleaguered fans. While released in January and certainly a little dark for the year, Eminem dropped Music To Be Murdered By. How can I have all these fans to perspire like a liar's pants, I'm on fire and I got no plans to retire and I'm still the man you admire. March saw the release of Childish Gambino's 3 20 and May brought Drake's mixtape Dark Lane Demo Tapes. Beyonce released Black Parade for Juneteenth during the George Floyd protests as a means to celebrate black culture. And just a few weeks later, Taylor Swift dropped Folklore, arguably her best album, and one conceived and recorded entirely in quarantine. She followed it up with a second surprise album, Evermore, in December. Number 7. New Ways of Connecting Desperate times make you do Weird things like video happy hours with all your friends. The COVID lockdowns forced us to get creative. For one thing, some of us began successfully working from home, throwing the entire concept of offices and commuting into question. But social events saw an equal amount of creativity and invention. We've had virtual concerts, Zoom meetings and get-togethers, and even school being conducted via the internet. 
We all came together to play and enjoy Among Us, which is basically the thing in video game form. Nobody trusts anybody now. Telemedicine has made healthcare more accessible. I think it's here to stay for the convenience and the value it adds. And I think it's going to be here long after coronavirus. I think it's here to stay. Yes, these are very poor substitutes for laughing in person with our loved ones, but this year saw people finding new ways to bridge physical distance, allowing us to share our lives while locked in our homes. Video conferencing is by far the main way we're staying close. It's connecting generations. I miss you so. I miss you too. Making sure none of us miss out on celebrating life's biggest milestones. Number six, animals get freaky. 2020 was a bad year for us humans, but a great year for some vulnerable species. Back in February, Ohio's Columbus Zoo proudly welcomed two cheetah cubs that were born through in vitro fertilization. We're always finding ways and, and seeking out ways of how can we um, increase the chances of this animal's survival in the wild. This fantastic event is 15 years in the making, and it may help the vulnerable species to thrive into the future. Today, there are only around 7,000 cheetahs left in the wild, where only 5% of cubs survive. Poaching and a loss of hunting grounds have led to so few cheetahs that too many are too closely related. Over in China, giant pandas Yingying and Lulu successfully mated for the first time. In mid-July, Yingying Ying began experiencing symptoms of pregnancy, including more restful periods and a loss of appetite. Even though it didn't pan out, it's very promising for next year. Like cheetahs, giant pandas are currently listed as a vulnerable species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Number five, more hope for an eventual HIV cure. Um, you've tested positive for HIV. Uh, which is the virus that causes AIDS. HIV is still considered a global epidemic. It's claimed upwards of 32 million lives from the early 80s to 2018. And in 2018 alone, it claimed 770,000. Luckily, a cure is perhaps approaching. Back in 2007, a man named Timothy Ray Brown was officially cured of HIV. Brown's case is rare. The procedure is extremely dangerous and won't work in most patients because the bone marrow he received had a special genetic mutation. Over 10 years later, in March of 2020, a London man named Adam Castillejo was also declared cured after 30 virus-free months. This marks a huge step in the medical field toward finding a cure for the virus, one that had sparked a global health crisis predating the 1980s. He had received a stem cell transplant with cells lacking the harmful CCR5 gene. The study's lead author claimed, quote, these results represent the second ever case of a patient to be cured of HIV. But he also emphasized that the treatment is a last ditch effort that will not be made widespread. Could this be a possible cure for AIDS? Uh, possibly lead to a cure. And that's what doctors are underlining here, lead to a cure. Number four, COVID-19 vaccines. Moderna showing a 94.5% efficacy rate. Pfizer now says its vaccine is 95% effective. The next monumental challenge, delivery. The good news regarding COVID is that the ending is in sight. Well, an ending to the most extreme measures anyway. A number of different companies have developed COVID vaccines, including Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca. Well, the companies will present a great dossier of all their information to the Food and Drug Administration and their internal experts will then start to review it, but very quickly. With emergency use authorization, some countries are already rolling them out, and more will follow suit within the next few months. The first batch is going to frontline workers, hospital staff, and the vulnerable. However, the general population will eventually follow. Various public figures have suggested that life may return to some degree of normality by spring or summer of 2021. Realistically, even with the vaccine, we won't get rid of COVID-19 overnight. Number three, global effort to help Australia. The fires aren't just in one location. They're raging everywhere. There's something hauntingly poetic about 2020 opening with fire. Australia suffered a particularly horrid bushfire season throughout 2019 and 2020, with some referring to it as the Black Summer. While the fires began in June of 2019, they reached their hellish peak in January 2020. 
burning through 18 million hectares and costing upwards of $103 billion. The fires claimed billions of animals, 3,500 homes, and over 400 lives. There is no time to ease into the job for the Canadians or anyone else. This is a crisis, and one that seems certain to last for months to come. Luckily, the world pooled resources to help the burning country, showcasing a beautiful example of international unity. Numerous countries from around the world sent aid, including firefighters, aircraft, military units, food, clothing, and money. I'm just gonna work with the system you guys have and the folks you guys have, and just super excited to learn and help wherever I can. Number two, nature got a break. One byproduct of COVID lockdowns was witnessing the return of nature. Air pollution levels temporarily plummeted, with nitrogen dioxide levels in Wuhan, China, and Milan, Italy decreasing by 30 to 40 percent. Between January and March, there is a drastic change in the northern part of the country. The region saw 40 percent less emissions from sources such as factories and automobiles by March. Greenhouse gases were reduced from the lack of factory operation and travel. The ozone layer showed clear signs of recovery. It's a pattern seen around the world. The lighter the shade here, the bigger the decline in emissions. In some countries, up again, but still a huge change. Animals started to reclaim land, with pink flamingos increasing in Albania and lions populating other areas of South Africa's Kruger National Park. World leaders pledged to focus on cleaning the world's oceans, and waterways around the world started to enjoy a healthy comeback with the canals of Venice turning crystal clear due to a lack of kicked up sediment. The water in its many canals, usually dull and murky as a result of the many boats, is suddenly clear. Nature has been consistently strained in recent decades, so it was nice to see good news. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. A new appreciation for teachers and healthcare workers. The world collectively applauded the brave. Uh small gesture that these uh, law enforcement uh, personnel and firefighters giving these frontline workers, turning the tables on them and calling them heroes. Bacterial enzyme that digests plastic. Will we eat our way out of the plastic problem? The researchers note even with the increased speed over pedes alone, this new super enzyme is still not fast enough yet to be commercially viable. Wonder Chicken. We possibly found the ancestor of the modern day chicken. An international team of paleontologists have published their findings which proves, they say, that birds existed in the northern hemisphere alongside the dinosaurs. SpaceX made history. We're at the dawn of a new age, says NASA Deputy Administrator. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition, liftoff of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA, go SpaceX, Godspeed, Bob and Doug. Parasite wins best picture. Pang Jun Ho's satirical masterpiece became the first foreign language film to do so. Want more Mojo? Ms. Mojo produces original, high quality pop culture related videos on all your favorite movies and shows. Plus, celebrity news, fashion, lifestyle, and more. Hey guys, it's Phoebe with Ms. Mojo. My name is Sam. My name is Eliza. And I'm Emily. I'm Rebecca, and welcome to Ms. Mojo. If you want videos on all the best reality shows, teen dramas, Disney movies, and sitcoms, be sure to check out Ms. Mojo for new videos every day. Number one, many people came together to fight COVID-19. 2020 was an unbelievably difficult and divisive year. But it also showed the best of humanity. A huge number of people wore masks and stayed home, signifying a wish or at least a reluctant acceptance to do their part. Distilleries made hand sanitizer. We came together to support healthcare and frontline workers. We spoke out against racism and police brutality. We made ventilators and masks. Celebrities used their clout to spread awareness and raise money for various causes. We really have to all stay at home. It's the only way that we're going to stop the spread of this virus and it's only going to work if we all do it together. We join together for hope through unity. In a terrible year, it's important to recognize what people have achieved by working and striving together. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.